So if you've been in touch with the VR or gaming community recently, you may have seen this guy. Or you could go with not using a glove material at all and just use your hands. That's totally fine, but... And his insane DIY glove project. Servos tied to strings? It offers you the ability to grasp items in VR and feel force feedback on your individual fingers. The other thing I have is its creator, Lucas. Hello. Lucas, talk to me. Start with why. Is it for sex things? The first time I discovered this, I instantly knew. I was like, man, I want to do this project. This is freaking insane. And it took me a few months. It took me a, it took me a year. And it took me an entire year to actually take initiative and start the project. Um, so yeah, this isn't going to be like a super in-depth tutorial video or anything. There, there are already a few of those out there by Lucas himself and like the mystical and stuff. Those videos are super helpful and they helped me during this process. But this video is just kind of meant to like fill in the gaps of what they not really left out, but I don't know, just some, just some extra information that might be helpful for people as well as just document how my experience went I guess so yeah a fair warning if you're like me your floor might look like this for like the next three weeks if you're thinking about ever doing this project I would highly 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 recommend that you join the LucasVR discord server and you may be thinking oh, well, I already have so many discord servers i don't need another one just for the project join the discord server anyway the admins on there are so helpful if you're ever having a problem or anything and if you don't have a 3d printer like me which is where you kind of have to start there is a bunch of people on there that will 3d print parts for you and i would think that's more reliable than like going to a 3d printing service or something because the people on the discord actually know what the final product is and what you're making so it seems more trustworthy to me except it is also over discord and i did get scammed out of 25 dollars <laughs> so be cautious i guess as expected many things did go wrong in this build in the words of thrill seeker and you're going to run into issues maybe even a lot of them but some things that i did were actual problems and others i thought were problems and then i realized i was just doing them wrong i recorded um a few snapchat videos though just because i wanted to and i thought it was cool so i will go back through those videos and point out what i did wrong Work gloves are a pretty good option if you want something that's pretty durable and rigid. Thin leather gloves are a good option for durability and flexibility. Now if you're looking to go dirt cheap and hit that $22 mark, nylon or cotton inspection gloves are super low cost in bulk. So this is what I went with. I went with this like cotton type glove thing. And I mean, yeah, they're cool. They work, but I wouldn't recommend it really because when I put it on, it's like, I would assume with a, a glove that is not this material, it would be m more rigid. And I have to like put every end cap in the place instead of just sliding it on. Getting it on isn't too bad. So like, yeah, that's fine and cool now. But getting it off, I have to like each individual finger and then slightly pull it off and hope I don't break anything. I mean, I haven't done this glove yet, but... I'm gonna go with this anyways because I want them to match, but if I were to start over and redo this, I would not do that type of glove. The glove itself just barely protects me enough that I don't like start burning my hand when I glue this on. <laughs> okay, I lied. That kind of hurt. I'm burning a little bit. Pause. You see, you see that? So this is a problem if you're dumb. I didn't, I don't know, I didn't, I don't know how to use housings, dude. I was like, yeah, okay, it'll be fine. I'll just have the thing there. Except it'll go through the little super black box. Wow, so cool. I'll put the connectors into there. And I'll just attach this awesome housing to it. Wow, so cool. It didn't work. 
I don't, it's pro, I probably did it wrong. That's, that's like a, a hundred percent the reason why it didn't work, but didn't work. None of my potentiometers worked. And I was like, man, I'm so discouraged. My glove doesn't work. It's broken. Just, just don't, just don't use housings if you don't know how to use them. All right. So I daisy chained. Pause again. If you don't know how to daisy chain, I, I didn't, I did not know how to daisy chain. So I was just like, yeah, I'll get my two little crappy 20 gauge wires twist them together and then i'll then i'll get my big my big crimper out i basically just put the two things together into one you can't see because the camera doesn't want to focus and i put them in the tightest crimp there is on the sock on the on the, on the tool crush them together dude you see that it's not good <laughs> watch this dude watch I was hardly any force. And even if you do solder them in, this wire gauge, tw 22 gauge stuff is so small that the, the strands can still just like break apart and break off. And the covering stuff can also break off and just, just break it and it's horrible. So my other tip is don't get that wire. Stupid 20, 20 gauge or 22 gauge stuff i don't know what it, what it actually is get big 18 gauge stuff actually i can't recommend this yet because i <laughs> i haven't used it but get bigger wire than this just just get everything separately you can get like the connectors for like five dollars on amazon you can get a ratchet tool probably for like 10 or 20 dollars and then you can get this nice thick boy 18 gauge wire for 10, 20 bucks or whatever. And then it'll be better than the set. You won't have housings, but who needs housings? Housings are lame for lame people who are, they're, they're cool. Housings are cool, but they're for lame people. Another thing that's kind of important that I don't think they said in these videos is that you should oil your potentiometers. They're a little bit gritty. It's fine if the sound doesn't go away, like when you oil them, but they'll be more loose and and better. Just just oil oil all your potentiometers. So when I was wiring up my glove and I was wiring up all the buttons and uh, thumbstick here, I guess I wired something wrong or I, something something went wrong along the way. So I'd pull my finger down like this, and it would just like start spinning so it started just spinning me around and around it was really weird i'll try spinning that's a good trick and i i tried uh because i thought it maybe i wired it with like the index finger so that the index finger was triggering like the y cable or something so i pulled this because that's all that's actually happening there it's just this is being pulled and it's reading it on the potentiometer so i did that and it wouldn't start it didn't start spinning only when i actually pulled this down and then I pulled, like, I tried grabbing the thumbstick module itself and pulling that down, and then started spinning again. So it was really weird, and I still don't know what it was, but basically, I just took the X and Y from the thumbstick, and I put them somewhere else on the board where it wouldn't be conflicting, and then I just changed it in the firmware. Don't really know what that was about, but that was a thing. Also, I'm currently struggling with, um, like, calibration values or something is being weird i'm grabbing things in game and this was fine before but now it's getting weird again i was grab things in game and if i don't like tilt my hand downwards and do m pull more then it like starts dropping stuff it's really hard to play blade the sorcery because i'm grabbing like swords and stuff and i try to like swing it at someone and i just like throw the sword and i'm like okay this is cool i I still don't know <laughs> how exactly to fix that, but I'm gonna try fixing in the firmware because I don't think it's a wiring issue. Another thing I struggled with was this controller mount. So I have a Rift S controller. It's a Quest 2 controller mount, which is a little bit like bigger. So what I did was I just, um, I took the wrist strap thingy and put that through there. And um, now it's a little bit more stable into the ring. But since I mounted the uh, the rigid mount so far back, this was kind of just like flopping around. So you, you can see it in game when I'm testing it here in Boneworks. 
like holding the gun out and the controller mount is just like flopping around because the controller is so heavy. And it was before I had this piece of foam here. So it would just wiggle around when I was trying to shoot. And it was really not very good. <laughs> Something that I can confidently say I never saw in any of these tutorials as well was how you mount the electronics. For the, uh, the buttons and joystick, I literally just took the bottom of the modules and hot glued them to the finger. But I didn't really want to uh, glue my ESP32 to the glove because like, there's a CPU on the bottom of there. I mean, it's tiny, but it's, it's like I don't I don't want to glue that to my glove. That's see, that's like a that's a sin. You don't you don't glue your CPU to the to cotton like freaking what? What I did, which, if you are following my advice, you can't. I mean, you can do this on other gloves, but it'll be harder. I got a I got a knife and I just like poked holes. <laughs> in my glove. I, I safely poked holes in my glove. I got one of these velcro pieces that looks like this. Has a little hole in the top there. And I basically just put that through the two holes and then came it back around on itself and then like did that. So it's not like a permanent thing. I can still get it off. Yeah, you see like like that. It's also really nice because of that that hole right there can um go right be the perfect spot to put the uh, USB cable micro USB for powering the ESP32 on the ESP32 there's these two buttons on either side right here and here one says EN one says IOO for some reason to flash the firmware I have to hold down the IOO button just anytime I'm flashing the firmware so it's really nice to have that velcro thing because I can just un hook it and then reach my finger under there and press the button so that it actually writes to the thing. Another thing is that they say it's like a $22 build, but it's only really that price if you don't already have like DIY stuff. So let's go over my Amazon orders and see how much money I've spent on this project. So these portable chargers, it was a two pack, it was like 30 bucks. These two buttons, which are overpriced, I bought two of the two buttons, so there's four. Uh, so that would be 16 bucks. Badge rails, which are $17. The crimping kit, which was $27. The dev boards, which were $15. And the thumbsticks, which were $9. And these freaking five thumbsticks were way less than the four buttons, so... That's, uh, that's cool. Instead of using buttons, I could have just wired up all of these joysticks and used the switches as buttons, and it would have been less. Cables that I bought that are long cables, because I need them to reach from my pocket, the battery bank in my pocket, that's $10. And then all the servos were $25? Holy crap. And then the new wire I just bought was $27, which if you are doing this, you could definitely avoid that, because... If you, if you buy things right the first time and not get the kit. The 3D printed parts were uh, $53, which that will vary between you and whoever's printing your parts and stuff. And the gloves themselves were free. I just went downstairs and grabbed them. And the grand total is $227.45. I am disappointed in myself, but this is the price. <laughs> for haptic feedback i guess so yeah th that's all for this video i guess uh i got the servos and the bigger gauge wire so i'm gonna use that on the servos as well as to wire up the second glove um so for troubleshooting for servos and stuff as well as finding out what the the why the grip thing wasn't working uh i'll just i'll, I'll make a, a second video a follow-up video for that um but yeah, hopefully if you're doing this project, or even if you're not, hopefully it was helpful and or entertaining. And yeah, best of luck if you're doing the project. Hopefully your gloves work. Mine kinda do. <laughs> yeah, see you guys next time.